Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and this is the first video in our next Combat Patrol series. So I'm going to take a look at the Sisters of Battle Combat Patrol. I'm going to run through my ideas for how I want it to look, um, how I'm going to achieve a, a gaming army, um, so something that looks really fantastic on the tabletop that I can get done in a realistic amount of time. I'm going to take a look at a couple of the, the major different sort of units that we're getting in the box, things like the tank, the repentia, uh, and then the sisters themselves. And at the end of the project, we'll look back and see if there's anything we've learned in particular or that we might want to tweak for the next one, all the while taking a look at your questions over the course of the videos. Now, Sisters is a personal favourite of mine. Um, I absolutely loved the second edition book when it came out. My mate Anne had a, a what beautiful painted army of them. Um, the classic, is it Order of Martyred Lady, the, the black and the white and the red one. Um, and actually, that's the point. My One of my major focuses with this is I don't want to do black and red. Um, yes, it looks awesome. I absolutely love the combination, but I think it's used an awful lot in Warhammer stuff, uh, and particularly with um, Inquisition or, or uh, more of the Baroque type thing. Like, you know, it doesn't get much more grimdark, in my opinion, than things like Sisters of Battle. Um, so I just wanted to challenge myself and do not use the black and red combination but I do want to try and go for a bit more of a grimdark vibe than for instance we did with that strike force Agastus recently. Now I'm going to do a couple of test models in this video so as usual when we're doing testers we're going to execute them to about 80% of the level that we want them to be at at the end but it should give us a really good idea before we then go and put some paint uh, on our actual models and thankfully I had a couple in a box that Andy gave me years ago um, so whilst I'm waiting for my combat patrol to arrive I can do a few of these testers. So let's paint. First up, we're just going to a couple of notes uh, on sub assemblies and, and prepping the models. I like to paint my models off the base, uh, usually on a cork, and this is particularly important, I think, with the sisters when we've got to get up into these robes, um, which I think putting them on the base is just going to make it too awkward. However, they've got teeny tiny feet. You know, they're very slender models and drilling into them and pinning them, I found I was accidentally, you know, drilling through the plastic. Um, so all I've done is used a bit of sprue, pinned that to the base, and then I've just tacked the model onto that bit of sprue with a bit of super glue so I can snap it off easily later. When I get the actual combat patrol box as well, I think I'm going to blue tack the backpacks on. Um, just to let me get even better access to the whole miniature. Um, say these models I got off Andy, they were all pre-done and stuff, so they're just um, they're all they're all assembled already. Now, one of the schemes I wanted to do, um, I'd seen a few of these these variations on sort of white or bone uh, or ivory uh, type schemes. I thought that's pretty nice. That's 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 something a bit different. Um, so I've base coated the model using Tamiya Flat Earth, which as you can see is sort of a light brown color. Um, I've thinned that about two or three drops of Tamiya X Twenty A thinner. To the paint and I've just got a solid base coat down and then the main color is going to be another Tamiya paint this time it's called medium gray and although it's medium gray I actually think it's a lot more like a very light sort of tan color like a deck tan color it's not deck tan they have deck tan they have like a billion different grays and browns Tamiya um, so if you like that sort of thing go and check that range out just one thing to bear in mind when you're using Tamiya is you do need to use the Tamiya thinners um, even though they're acrylics, they're a solvent-based uh, acrylic paint, so using your normal thinners with them, it's not going to look great. Now you can see I'm building up the layers of this medium grey. I've thinned it slightly more than the base coat, so maybe four drops of thinner to one drop of paint. I'm just slowly building it up, leaving some of that brown in the recesses, and I'm sort of deciding there's a light source from the front right and the back right as we look at it. Nice and simple. If you don't have an airbrush, just rattle can it on, that sort of colour that you want. Now I'm going to do uh, one of my favourite things, uh, which is to use oil paints to just add a little bit of uh, interest, more interest to the uh, the paint that we've already got on there. So I've chosen a dark brown, uh, a sort of buff colour uh, and a very light blue colour. And all we're going to do is put little dots of neat oil paint all over. And generally I'm going to put the darker dots where the shadows are more and then the lighter dots where the highlights are more, but I will make sure there's a spread of them across the model. Now this is a real sort of bastardized version of uh, oil dot filtering, oil paint rendering that you'll see in the military modeling style of painting. Um, I really like what it does to my paint, um, to, to, to the, the paint work on the model, um, particularly over airbrush work. 
Um, I find once that's on there like that, neat, I then take my brush, dip it in some thinners, wipe them all off, and then I can just use that brush to blend them into the surface. And what I find it does is it just sort of softens some of those airbrush transitions. But then it also, to me, gives just lovely, interesting little streaks and little changes of color uh, on the armor. Now, when we come to do things like the tank, you'll see this in much starker detail. Um, much bigger panels, it's much more obvious. But hopefully you can see how that has changed um, that that color that we had underneath it and just giving it a bit more and a bit more bite to it. I just, I enjoy it. The reason I'm thinking about this a lot is because I will, when I look back on this, decide were there stages that were redundant, which I think is always worth, you know, don't just do something because that's what you've always done or that's what someone tells you to do. Think about why you're doing each step. That's what I try and do anyway. Now I've given the model uh, a couple of coats of gloss varnish here. I'm using Vallejo polyurethane gloss, thinned two or three drops of normal airbrush thinner, and all the time I'm spraying about 30 psi, 25 to 30 psi, 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle in our Harder and Steambet Coat of Paint Infinity, and that's to prep it for a pin wash. Um, now I've done a video dedicated to recess washing and the different materials you can use for it, but I'm going to use oils for this. One, because I like using them, and two, because I think the look of oils is synonymous with sort of the grim dark vibe. Um, I've chosen sepia here, sepia, sepia, I know how you say it, this dark brown colour. Um, and you can see the wash as I'm popping it on the rim there. It's not too thick, it's not too heavy. Um, we will use a heavier wash later on uh, when we come to our uh, other scheme. And because of that high gloss surface, so there's low surface tension because of the gloss, and then low surface tension because of the solvent in the oil, all that paint's just wicking into those recesses and leaving the flat areas nice and clear. Now whilst I'm doing this, I just want to take a quick moment to say thank you ever so much for all of the support you give us over on Patreon. It allows us to produce the videos we do over here and the videos that we produce exclusively for Patreon. Um, it's just awesome. You know, me and Andy are so incredibly appreciative uh, of the support you guys give us and that you allow us to take on these projects um, and incidentally it was really lovely to see the response to that recent Agastus video um, if you guys want to see a bit more of this army painting more on mass than just on one model I'm more than happy to start grabbing up combat patrols and little kill team boxes and things like that and painting through them um, to have a look at you know it's great fun for me um, and you've all said that you're more than happy to have sort of two or three videos on a subject um, providing it's, you know, sort of interesting enough warrants it. So once I've uh, applied that pin wash, I've let it dry, maybe 10, 15 minutes, add a cup of tea basically. Then I've come back and with a soft brush, just dipped in some thinners, took all of the excess water off, uh, water off, mineral spirits off. I'm just cleaning up any of that oil that might have sat uh, or pooled on any of the flat surfaces where I don't want it. This stage is Whilst it is a pin wash and it is designed to bring a little bit of definition into the model, I actually like that it's filtered the model and given it that slightly grungy look. Um, I'm not too fussed that it hasn't necessarily given me super definition all over. We can address that a little bit later. Now because I've gloss varnished the model, um, it's going to be quite hard to paint the rest of it because the gloss surface is not going to take the paint very well. So I'm just going to give it a quick spray with some matte varnish, in this case ultra matte, but it really doesn't matter. And this is so the other areas of the model now have a matte finish so the paint will take to them uh, well when we paint it. Now other than the armour, I think the standout part of the sisters model, or certainly the battle sisters, I'm going to keep calling them sisters of battle, I know it's Adeptus Sororitas, sorry. Um, I've just always called them sisters of battle, that's how I've known them. Um, but I think this unit is called a battle sister. Um, so that's, you know, it's kind of close. But yeah, the armour and the cloaks. So they're the two things that I absolutely want to nail. Um, all the other details, and there are a lot of them, we can do quite simply and they'll still look cool, but what we really want to get right is the armour and the cloaks. So I've chosen to go for a sort of purpley pink uh, on the inside of this. So I've done a couple of base coats using Galvel Back uh, by Games Workshop. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now I'm going to layer over Screamer Pink. Now you can see as the paint's going on, it's quite thin. So we need to make sure we don't have too much on our brush, otherwise it's going to leave large deposits and then you get those weird little tide marks and stuff when they dry. And all we're doing, rather than the, the classic sort of heavy metal style where we paint the most prominent outside parts of the robe will be the lightest and then the deep recesses will be the darkest, we're going to paint it a little bit more like how the robe or the material would look if the light was hitting it from above. So any surfaces that are the most sort of perpendicular to the light source above 
will be the lightest and any facing directly away from it will be the darkest. And for me, the simplest way to do this is to work up from the shadow, use nice thin layers. That way, if you put a bit where you don't want it, it's really easy to then glaze it back using the previous color um, to either darken it down or just blend it in. And we do want nice smooth blends on these robes. I didn't want to airbrush them because they're all over the model and airbrushing them, you're going to have to do a lot of masking and you're not necessarily always going to be able to hit the right points with the airbrush as well. So I think using a brush to do this it works perfectly well. And here you can see I'm just going to start glazing back in with that um, unhighlighted Screamer Pink. So it went Galvo back, Screamer Pink, and then I just added a little bit of white into Screamer Pink for the final highlight. For the black robes, uh, I've base coated them using model color black. It's my favorite black paint, use whatever you want to do. And I'm just going to go for one highlight and I'm going to use Petroleum Gray by Scale 75. It's a lovely gray color. It's got, I think, maybe purple or something in it. Um, but it's just got that bit of color. It's not like a super desaturated gray. Um, and I think it just, particularly on black, I think that works really, really well. Um, I think if you use really desaturated gray, sometimes when you highlight black, uh, particularly cloth where we've got to do these large highlights you're in danger of it ending up looking potentially looking gray um, when it's nice little sharp edge highlights on things like bolter casings and stuff like that don't think it really matters um, but for me uh, i think that little bit of added color really really helps and you can see here on the back i'm just going to slowly build it up so i'm just thinking the lights coming from above maybe slightly to the left as we look at it all those surfaces facing it will get uh, that highlight and then a step I also did on the purple is I went back in with the darkest color, so in this case black, but just made sure that those surfaces that were facing directly away from the light were nice and dark. So the robes by far took the longest uh, part of the model to do, but you're still not talking more than, I don't know, 10 minutes or something for the model. Um, you know, we're only really doing one, maybe two highlights at a push. Um, and that was only really because that robe was, you know, on the front and there wasn't an awful lot of purple on there. So I thought it would be nice to give it a bit of bit of something. Um, but, you know, we're not taking it through to display level. We're not going through umpteen different highlights, just nicely placed, deliberate highlights. Um, I did do a black and red tester just because I love it. But hopefully you can see there again, that's exactly the same. Just one highlighted red over the dark. I think it gives you enough um, uh, enough interest in the model. And once that was done, I wanted to do a little bit of sort of edge highlighting come battle damage. Um, sort of tippy tappy chipping. Um, I'm not going to do lots of rust or, or dark, you know, corrosion and stuff on these models. Um, one of the major reasons is I think as soon as you do a bone colored model like this, um, it, I think a lot of people, sort of Death Guard, Nurgle, those kind of things come to mind. Rust and all that looks incredible over this color, but Think it does take you that way and also you know this their whole army of faith you know they're burning away heretics all that sort of thing so i thought chips and stuff is fine but i'm going to not go too heavy on the corrosion so all i did was do a little bit of carac stone tippy tapping along those edges and that adds some definition as well as some more interest to that armor now i mentioned a minute ago how the pin wash hadn't necessarily given as much shadow to those recesses that i wanted and therefore hadn't brought as much definition as i wanted so here i'm taking a color olive drab very similar color. And I'm just gonna paint that in to the recesses. So this is kind of like black lining, which used to be a, a technique that was used tons in the 90s with, with miniatures painting. Um, and for me, it adds that extra level of definition, which is exactly what I want, particularly for tabletop miniatures. You need to be able to identify what those miniatures are you know, at a glance, and that really helps. Now at this point, we spent a fair bit of time on the armor and the robes, so we can keep the details super simple. Um, I've used uh, necro gold which is a lovely old gold sort of looking color for all the gold parts and then i've mixed up um, a bit of silver and black to create a very dark silver that i'm going to use for the bolt gun um, we'll talk about silver very shortly when we do the um, do the next model and then once it's dry all i've washed over it is a mix of gray and brown oils this is the same mix that we're going to use when we paint the silver scheme um, in a minute where we'll go into the exact ones we used but again just that simple base color, wash, and then a little highlight later. It's all we need to do. Um, these details, whilst they're cool, let's, let's let the sculpt do the work for us, right? We're just gonna color them in, make them look nice, simple, defined, wash, done. It's the armor and the robes that are really 
what these models are all about, in my opinion. And actually, I'm undecided, but I think I'm going to put helmets on most of my sisters. And that's largely because that just wasn't an option back in the day. You know, you had one or two helmeted models when it, the whole range was metal. Um, and I just think they look so cool with the helmets. But I haven't decided. I don't really think it will be that much quicker to do them with helmets um, than do them with, with, without helmets. The, 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 they're very tiny heads. And actually, you know, you're not having that many models in the army anyway. Um, so if you did want to paint them all helmetless, I think you'd be absolutely fine to do that and still achieve this in a realistic time frame. Now for the eye lenses, nice and simple. I've taken a very dark green, despair green, over black, just wash that into the uh, the eye socket, as it were, the lens. And then I'm going to keep adding moot green, so a almost fluorescent sort of bright green. I'm going to keep adding that into my despair green. And I'm just going to create a nice sharp highlight along the bottom edge of the lens. And I'm going to fill it in a little bit more towards the center of the face as well. I'm not going to bother with a white dot or anything like that. I just want a sort of nice glowy, not, not glowy, but just a, a, a softer lens um, than perhaps I would do on, say, a marine lens. Just for the sake of something a little bit different. Um, and as usual, if you do that highlight line a little bit fat... You can go back in with the darker color here, so this is the despair green, and just neaten it up. Very, very simple to do, and you'll smash through a squad of lenses, you know, in a little hobby session there. So for the silver uh, scheme, originally I was going to do, oh, I think it's called Ar Iron Veil, I think they're called, and they've got white and tan robes, and they look wonderful. I did one and I was like, you're just not doing an army like this. In my opinion, it, it, the time it was taking me to do the brush painted white robes and tan robes, I was like, it's just it's just not going to happen. So as cool as that scheme was, I'd rather have an army that was a percentage less cool, but done than one sister model. Um, so I've taken an exhaust manifold here by Metal Color Series and I've added in a drop of black. So this is what we did on the bolter previously. So give me a nice dark silver to start with. Then I've taken a uh, dual aluminium. Uh, this is also by Metal Color Series. I like using the Metal Color Series paints. Um, they're designed for the airbrush. I find I have to use a drop of flow improver um, just to help them do their thing. Um, so, you know, you, you, you might vary. You know, I don't know what your setups are, um, but I found that helps uh, when I'm using it. But what really matters here is we're using a really, really dark silver, a medium silver, but they're still nice and flaky and, and, and bright. Um, and then we're going to use a light uh, even lighter silver at the end here, just called silver, as you can see there. So effectively black, grey and white. And all the time I'm just using same pressure, 25 to 30 psi, same airbrush that I've used for everything so far. And you see that the airbrush work is, it's simple. It's not just straight zenithal, so straight from above, just highlighting the piece of plastic. You know, we're, we're going in and, and trying to replicate what those surfaces would look like if there was light shining on them and they were life size. But it's not difficult, um, you know, it's just a bit of control. So you can see the two together at that same stage of armor. So very, very quick um, step to do, which is great, which again is what we want. Um, I always want to take things further. And I think that's one of the reasons why armies don't get done. Now the wash for this, I really wanted to grunge this up. And this is a, a, something I came up with when I was working on my recent Slaves to Darkness project, uh, which is still ongoing, um, but all the armor is done, thankfully. Uh, and this is one of the uh, the recipes that I used for that. I made a mix up using Starship uh, Filth or Wash, can't remember what it's called, you'll have seen the tube, um, and sepia again, so effectively brown and gray, and a roughly 50-50 mix. And this is going to be a much heavier wash. And this is because I want this to really stain that silver surface, really grime it up and give us that almost archetypal grim dark kind of feel. Um, so I've used mineral spirits to mix it up. And I'm going to use a synthetic brush to apply it. But you can see there how much thicker that wash mix is than the one we did earlier. And you see how it's partly because we haven't glossed the miniature. Um, but also partly because it's a much thicker mix. You can see how it is staying on those surfaces. Now, we don't need to varnish the miniature. Um, oil paints, mineral spirits, they're not going to react with your acrylic paint that's on there, um, providing that acrylic paint is dry. So once I've done one layer, I let it dry. Then I've gone back in, and I've been a little bit more deliberate now with a second uh, coat of it, just to make sure there's plenty of grime and dirt and shadow 
um, in those recesses and around those details. And again, I'll let that dry for another 10, 15, um, and I will go in and repeat this, repeat the process again. So let's have three coats uh, of this oil wash. So it's acting as much like a filter as it is like a, a pin wash um, and all the rest of it. Uh, I'm not going to do the reductive thing where I go and take any of it off. I'd rather be more deliberate when I put it on initially. Now, this is, I went in the end, rather than the white and the tan, I've gone for brown and black. Um, I was teasing our commissions chief, Ben, um, when he was like, oh, I'd love to do sisters, you know, like a brown scheme. And I was like, oh, that would look awful. Um, and turns out he was right which is why he's an incredible commissions painter and you should go and get in touch with him. Um, but uh, yeah, it just, it looked really cool. Um, so I went for base coat of Rhinox Hide, a nice warm brown color. Uh, and then my highlight I chose was Thondia Brown, uh, both by Games Workshop. Again, a nice warm brown. Um, and this was quite deliberate um, because I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do the basing. I'm still not. Um, but also I, I knew that whilst there wasn't going to be any red on the model one thing red often does right is bring a bit of warmth you know and that can often um complement the other parts of the model the other colors we've got on it we can do a similar thing with a nice warm brown color and the robes are exactly the same so it's that idea of the lights coming from above what part of the robe would that hit and highlight that's where we go in and paint and sometimes you'll you might feel a bit strange doing it because you'll be painting right in the deepest part of a recess but if that recess, as I say, is, is perpendicular to that light, then that's going to be lit up as much as another piece of the cloth is. I'm really, really looking forward to painting all the robes uh, on this project. I often, when I pick a personal project, pick something that's got either a technique or a, a colour or a surface, you know, material that I, I want to just improve on a bit and I'll make sure it's got lots of it. Then by the end of that project, I know I'll have improved that skill set. Uh, and that's how I feel with this, even though we're not going to be taking it past, you know, one, possibly two highlights. And if I wanted to add a highlight to this, I would just mix a tiny bit of white in um, to that Thondia Brown. But that repetition, that working around the robes on each of the sisters models, it's going to give me that. So here I'm going back in with the Rhinox hide into the shadows. Now I did the little details, uh, I did them uh, white and then washed them with Payne's Grey Oil, I hated it. Um, so here I'm going back in and base coating them using Rust Grey and I will build up the highlights for that by adding white into it um, and that will be uh, my finish. Uh, I'll do a wash in a little bit but it won't be a, a grey grey blue wash. I just really didn't like how it came out, it looked messy and I don't want these models to look messy. Um, now at this stage I think you probably could leave them. They look nice, um, but for me, I wanted to do just one more layer of detail on them. Um, I was a little bit disappointed with the Agastus project in that I felt if I just spent maybe 10% more time on the individual Marines, I'd have been a hell of a lot happier with them. So that's my plan to do any that I add to that force. I will do the same. Um, and the little 10% extra I'm going to do with these sisters now is just go in, add a few more highlights. So on the silver, uh, I've taken um, Lead Belcher here. Um, and just popping along the edges, just bringing a little bit more of that definition um, to the miniature. And also bringing back a little bit of that shine that we've lost because we've covered it um, with the oil paint, which tends to have that matte finish to it. Always focusing on really being accurate as we can around the head area because that's often going to be the focal point uh, of the miniature when people look at it. And I think that's the key really with this is there's there's risk of it looking messy but if we're very very deliberate with every stage that we do we don't need to do millions of stages we just need to execute each of them well deliberately and we'll end up with a nice result. And then for the gold, I just added a little bit of Peridot Alchemy uh, into the um, Necro Gold. And I might use uh, a little bit of oil uh, to wash over as well to add a little bit of dirt to certain areas, maybe around the feet, the bolt gun, say. And that's all the extras that we did to them. So I'm pretty damn happy with how these two have come out. 
what I'd like uh, is for you to choose which one we're going to do for this combat patrol. Um, I would be very, very happy to do either of these schemes. As I say, the Sisters is a, a little project I've looked forward to for ages. I've wanted an army of them for goodness knows how long. I probably won't get one, but I can certainly do a combat patrol. So we're going to enjoy it. What I would say to bear in mind is that when we paint the tank, it is likely we'll be able to do a little bit more if we have that lighter scheme than the metallic scheme. Um, but, you know, it's it's it's, it's marginal. Um, but that is something to, to, to bear in mind for it. So if you want to let me know in the comments which of the schemes you prefer, I will get the box built up and we can get cracking uh, very soon. I would like to do the Rhino uh, next. I'm going to do a little bit of conversion work on it. So it may be one, it may be two videos, the Rhino, um, but I want to do quite an in-depth, full-on tutorial for that. I know people have been asking for a tank tutorial for absolutely ages, so we will go into that um, with the Rhino. And then I think probably the Repentia, um, because there's a lot of flesh and stuff, so we'll look at different ways we can um, get make that an efficient way uh, of painting. And then basing. I've, these two bases, again, are little placeholders. I've got an idea for what I'd like to do with the bases. Um, I'm not quite sure if I can pull it off yet, so I'm going to have a go at it off camera. Uh, and if I can, I'll make sure I do a video for it as well. So as ever, thank you ever so much for watching. Um, if you've got any questions about anything I've done, pop them down in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks ever so much for your support. If you can hit that like button, hit subscribe if you're not already. It really, really helps us out. And I'll see you next time. If you've liked any of the models in this video and you fancy having an army of them yourself, but perhaps you don't have the time or wherewithal to get it done, consider dropping us an email at commissions at cultofpaint.com and maybe Ben can sort you out.